Welcome guys to this Harrison based discussion module. We have completed previous topic likewise also. So this has been designed in such a fashion that completion of MCQ will lead to completion of the chapter. It will be beneficial for all those who will be facing the upcoming exams right from the NEET PG level or FMG level or the residents working in the medicine who has completed giving a fast reading to the Harrison or want to brush up the Harrison very quickly. This will surely help them. Right. So we are moving to the topic we are moving to the topic of acromegalic arthropathy which come into the part of systemic disease related arthritis okay so what is acromegaly actually guys so what is acromegaly acromegaly is a condition when there is excessive growth hormone so from where does the growth hormone secretion takes place growth hormone secretion takes place from a structure we know is known as the anterior pituitary now, when will anterior pituitary will cause increase in or excessive growth hormone secretion? It will only cause when there is some sort of pathology in it. And what is the pathology of our concern? Pathology of our concern is pituitary, pituitary adenoma. Right. Okay. So when there is pituitary adenoma, there is excessive secretion of growth hormone along with another hormone which have similar sort of property known as IGF or insulin like growth factor 1. Together this growth hormone and insulin like growth factor 1 what does it do? It causes it causes stimulation of abnormal growth of cartilage cartilage bone and connective tissue. All of those together lead to the condition known as acromegaly, right? Now, this acromegaly, as there is stimulation and growth of overgrowth of overgrowth of bone, connective tissue, and everything, therefore, there will be some musculoskeletal set of features in them, and that way we are going to look into detail. So, what are those most common musculoskeletal features? Most common one is osteoarthritis related change, then then carry then carry back pain, which is due to spine hypermobility. There can be cases dish, this is diffuse etiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. Some cases will be pseudo gout like picture. Some have carpal tunnel syndrome like pictures as well. Okay, so coming to the moving to the first MCQ question of the day. So, which of the following is characteristic radiographic finding in early acromegalic arthropathy? So, understand, guys, number one thing that it is nothing but feature of osteoarthritis. So, what happens in osteoarthritis? Suppose this is a joint, right? Suppose this is a joint. So, so in acromegaly or in the osteoarthritic changes, there will be cartilage, joint cartilage hypertrophy. So, what is happening? Cartilage hypertrophy. When there is initial cartilage hypertrophy, joint space is wide will widen up. So, widening up of joint space this is in fact the most earliest change that is observed on radiograph now in later on period this cartilage this cartilage when it gets more hypertrophic more hypertrophic more of the fiber gets accumulated ultimately there is a phase comes when there is laceration laceration in cartilage tissue and this laceration this laceration leads to fissure, fissure formation, leads to fissure formation as well as ulceration, right? Ulceration, ultimately there is a complete destruction, complete destruction of this cartilage. So fourth is destruction of this cartilage tissue. So when there is destruction of this cartilage tissue, there is joint space narrowing as well as subchondral cyst formation and erosions are taking place. Therefore, number one change which is seen is cartilage hypertrophy which causes widening of the joint space followed by more hypertrophy which causes laceration, fissure formation, ulceration and destruction of the joint space. Remember, inflammation that is seen in here in these changes are easily, easily associated with non-inflammatory, non-inflammatory 
fluid accumulation right so there is non inflammatory fluid accumulation in it okay so when you examine the patient what sort of clinical patterns they will show as there is non inflammatory fluid accumulation and joint restriction is present there so when you move the joint there will be there will be crepitation there will be crepitation number one point number two point there will be laxity of joints these are the two important point vital point that is seen in clinical examination therefore the answer to this question which of the following is characteristic radiographic finding in highly acromegalic arthropathy is nothing but widening of the joint space all right okay so as we have discussed earlier the musculoskeletal changes in acromegaly so this can be divided into most common most common musculoskeletal changes most common microskeletal changes is nothing but osteoarthritis it is very very commonly seen and it is seen in the knee shoulder hip and hand secondly secondly the one which is seen is back pain and why back pain occurs look there is hypertrophy in the vertebral discs discs also there is laxity in vertebral discs resulting into increased spine mobility so mainly due to increased spinal mobility or let's say it to be spinal hypermobility which results into back pain okay secondly there is chances of muscle weakness muscle weakness seen in this excessive growth hormone accumulation is remember is proximal variety proximal more than distal and there is no enzyme elevation no need of enzyme elevation aid because this is due to the growth hormone excess therefore mostly it is associated with normal enzyme normal cpk level and 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 emg emg if done would be normal okay then fourthly there is chances of carpal tunnel syndrome carpal tunnel syndrome is very common due to soft tissue proliferation in it where connective tissue element is deposited in the carpal tunnel leading to compression in the median nerve and leading to the features of the carpal tunnel syndrome it is almost invariably seen in 50% or half of the cases of acromegaly right there is also due to due to this soft tissue hyperperfusion thick heel pad thick heel pad is seen which is seen in almost one third of the cases one third of the cases and it can be observed in x rays as well and Reynolds phenomena is seen in one fourth of the cases. So, this is Reynolds phenomena, which is seen in one fourth. So, there is the rule in this acromegalic arthropathic changes that is half, one third, and one fourth rule. Half patient will have carpal tunnel rect feature, one third will have thick heel pad, and one fourth will have Reynolds phenomena. All right. Okay, so moving to the next question, here it says a 50 year old female with acromegaly presents with acute knee pain. So there is background of acromegaly, there is acute knee pain and swelling. Joint aspiration reveals weakly positive biperingent rhomboid shift crystal under polarized microscopy. What is the most likely diagnosis? So it is already given away in the biperingent pattern in the aspiration as well as the crystal pattern rhomboid shift. It is nothing but pseudo gout which is calcium pyrophosphate deposition now why does it happens actually in the joint cartilages it has been seen it has been seen not only in acromegaly other systemic arthropathy like hemophilic arthropathy as well as hemochromatosis related arthropathy that there is deposition of calcium pyrophosphate now, when there is destruction of these cartilages, this calcium pyrophosphate enters into the joint cavity, enters into the joint cavity, resulting into inflammatory swelling and pain, which we call to be pseudo gout. Management is similar to the pseudo gout. We know we need to give rest, ice pack compression, as well as insects. Okay. So, as this calcium is depositing along the cartilage line, along the cartilage line calcium you know can be observed in x-rays therefore cartilage will appear white in x-rays which will give the appearance of known as chondro 
chondrocalcinosis in x-rays so what is calcinosis calcinosis is calcium deposition chondro is in the cartilage as you can see here look in the joint space there is thin white line there is white line present that is nothing but chondro chondro calcinosis all right okay so moving to the next question here a patient with red acromegaly is noted to have dorsal kyphosis barrel chest and back pain so why back pain was happening in acromegaly because of the spinal hypermobility why spinal hypermobility because of the widening of the intervertebral space which ultimately also leads to this feature of dorsal kyphosis and dorsal kyphosis along with rib elongation rib elongation result into barrel chest formation deformity now on later on pages there is observed ligament calcification in this patient so which of the following condition is similar radiographic finding remember guys acromegaly has ligament calcification in contiguous vertebra in the same plane similar to the pattern of dish or diffuse idiopathic diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis right okay so these there will be radiographic feature of normal or widening of intervertebral base initially ultimately there will be hypertrophy of the anterior osteos, osteophytes as been mentioned here along with ligament calcification like dish so as you can see here that is this this normal vertebra whereas in dish there is flowing calcification along the side of contiguous vertebra right there is flowing calcification of ligament there is calcification of the ligament along the same plane of contiguous vertebra resulting in the appearance of dish you can also see here in this diagram there is calcification of ligament okay all right so coming to this next question here it says a patient with acromegaly complaints of proximal muscle weakness as we have discussed already so serum creatine and electromyography are normal obviously this is the feature of acromegalic muscle weakness what is the most likely cause of the weakness nothing but it is growth hormone induced muscle fiber size variation right remember it is without any inflammatory changes so there is not associated fever along with or redness along with so this is not a case of inflammatory myopathy rather than growth hormone induced muscle fiber myopathy and what is more important feature it is proximal myopathy all right okay so what are the soft tissue changes we can see in acromegaly soft tissue changes we can see enlargement of hand as well as the feet and enlargement of the hand will be in the pattern of thickening of the fingers like spade like distal tuft this thickening of the spade like formation of finger will be seen then in feet feet as you can see here there is thickened heel feet this thickened heel feet is seen in almost one third of the patient all right so you can observe here again in this radiographs so here as you can see this hill region is thickened this hill pad is thickened as you can see if this measurement is thickened it will be obviously more okay all right so this thick hill pad is seen in one third of the cases then carpal tunnel syndrome it is mainly due to the median nerve compression median nerve compression due to excessive connective tissue formation and it occurs around 50 percent of cases of acromegaly and it presents with carpal tunnel syndrome sometimes it can present with claw hand like feature as well okay now this is Renault phenomena Renault phenomena is seen in one fourth of the cases so what is this question this is the last question for the today's discussion of acromegalic arthropathy so here it says a man present with progressive enlargement of his hand and feet and coarse facial feature and joint pain radiograph reveals widened joint spaces with subcondral stresses. this is nothing but all of those are feature of acromegaly changes he also complains of frequent tingling and numbness in his finger that is carpal tunnel syndrome what is the most likely underlying cause of his carpal tunnel syndrome it is option c excessive growth of secretion all right okay so let's revise the harrison notes again so what we have studied till now so acromegaly is due to excessive growth hormone production by anterior pituitary adenoma important question it is not only growth hormone access it is insulin like growth factor 1 hs 
So it has got musculoskeletal problems like osteoarthritis, back pain, muscle weakness or carpal tunnel syndrome. Osteoarthritis initial there will be joint space widening but later on there will be narrowing of the joint space along with subchondral sclerosis and osteophyte formation. Joint and examination will reveal crepitus. Pseudo gout can be seen because of the CPPT arthropathy which on x-rays will give chondrocalcinosis appearance. Right? Then spinal abnormality is hypermobility mainly which cause responsible for the back pain. Radiograph in spine radiograph there will be normal or widened intervertebral discs and ligament calcification will be similar to DISH that is diffuse epitax skeletal hyperostosis. There will be barrel chest due to rib elongation or dorsal kyphosis. In soft tissue changes we got enlarged hand and feet, we got spade like distal tufts in the thickened finger, thickened healthy pad seen in one third of the patient, Raynaud's phenomena seen in one fourth of the patient. Carpal tunnel syndrome is caused by median nerve compression due to excessive connective tissue formation which is occurring in 50% of the patient and muscle weakness which is proximal in nature, no inflammation in it, normal serum enzymes and electromyography. Alright, okay. That's all about discussion. In the next module, we will look into the other form of arthropathy associated with systemic disease like hemophilic arthropathy or hemochromatosis associated arthropathy or sickle cell disease associated arthropathy. Thank you.